Chamfered corbels set off this mantelpiece, designed using Windsor One architectural moldings. The mantel itself is easy to build. The drawings and dimensions are on my website, GaryMCats.com. The entire entablature is really just a framework of 1x6, with a 1x12 frieze board, the corbels, the mantel shelf, and the crown molding. I've used chamfered corbels before, years ago on a craftsman style home near Pasadena. We installed a lot of alder on that job, from the pilasters to the coffered ceiling, but it was the mantelpiece that really jumped out, and the corbels made that mantel. The toughest part of this whole craftsman mantelpiece is making this kind of chamfered corbel. It's an end block, but it's really a corbel on top of an end block. Now, to make them out of paint grade stock is pretty easy. It's just two self-returns and the face piece. And you cut the self-returns first. If you're doing it out of paint grade, you don't even have to worry about where you cut them from. If you're doing it out of stain grade, you should be more careful so that, to make sure that the grain follows all the way around the piece. So I'm going to cut both these self-returns first, just like I do for an apron underneath a window. And I'll drop the saw down to 45 degrees. I've got the fences removed. And I'll swing the saw to 15 and make this first cut so the long point comes out right at the tip of this piece. And I can line it up real easily with the laser here and just back this off until that laser line is right on the tip of the piece. So that's the first one. To get the second one, all I have to do is relieve this piece right here. And obviously, I'm cutting one off with the face on this side of the material, and this one here is actually going to have the good face on it, but they're self-returns. They're not going to show that much, and plus it's paint grade, so really it doesn't matter which side of the board is ends up face out. So I'll line this one up with that laser line right on the short point over here of this piece. So those are the two self-returns. Now, if you don't cut these perfectly right at the short point of the bevel and, you know, right at the short point of the bevel and the short point of the miter, sometimes you may have to adjust these up or down just a little bit and then cut them off again just to make sure that the miters line up perfectly when they're butted to each other in the back. I'm going to butt these up flush in the back. Just get them flush like this and then get them flush on this end and then make sure that the short points of these miters are perfectly flush inside because if they're not perfectly flush then the little corbel is going to rock. It's not, the legs won't be exact, the self-return legs won't be exactly the same length. Like I said, you can correct that if you get these off. You can just slide these back and forth until they do line up and then trim a little bit off the top, off the bottom and you're going to end up trimming the top later on anyway and you'll see that in a second. So now let's cut this next piece. I'm going to drop the saw down to 45 again but we'll keep it at 90 degrees to the fence. And I'll just cut a relief here, cut a miter at this piece. This is a really good example about what most of us would do. I mean, when you make these little corbels, you're going to probably be tempted to make them out of some of the shortest scrap you have lying around because it's a good opportunity to use it up. The trouble is when you're making pieces out of these small, out of this small waste or something, you have a tendency to get your hand a little too close to the blade and it can get dangerous. Cutting small pieces like this is really, really dangerous. It's the moment when you really could lose some fingers or, you know, a big chunk of your hand. So be careful. That's why um, you get these hold downs with your saw. You can also make a jig. You can make a jig yourself that has a toggle clamp on it so you can get your pieces into your saw without getting your hand right up close to the blade. I think I'm going to be able to use this hold down for this cut if I cut it in one direction. So what I'll do is I'll make my mark from this side. Now you can measure this in either direction. If I want to, 
I could cut it this way right now. I want this to end up five and a half inches on the face. So I could cut this piece from the face and just line that laser line up right there with that mark and I'd get exactly the right piece that I wanted. But there's no way to get this clamp in over here. This piece isn't long enough for the clamp to reach. It'll only reach out to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and I'll measure back from this side. And on this side of the line, and I'm going to burn an inch here too, on this side it's supposed to measure 3 and 15 16. So that would be 4 and 15 16. So I'll make a mark right there. And now I can line the laser up right on that mark and then clamp the piece down. And that's why these clamps are so handy. You just have to push that down and run the clamp on it. It's that fast. So use the clamps that came with your saw whenever you have to make a cut like this. Now I can pick the saw. And get a perfectly clean cut without having to risk my fingers. Let's take these pieces over to the table now and I'll show you how to put these together pretty quickly.